as soon as I'm ready to record. Yeah, and them, yeah, and them. And yo, what rate is happening here? What rate is happening here? Uh, and that, that is my son, Chav, he's a man real fanatic about his letters Before he could um, barely talk good, he already knew he for better ones that different words and things So before I do a video, I think about what is the best way with giving the time that I can help the students And I think the best way I can help physics students is if I just do a whole pass paper and explain as I go along So I did a whole pass paper This video is going to be a little longer than usual So people who now trying to learn something in physics, you probably don't need to watch this them dogs start back again. Yeah, so if you're now trying to learn something in physics, you probably don't need to watch this. You probably just need to watch a textbook or watch back over from one to three and die you there. But people who are revising and they already have an idea and they want to learn something for exam on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, when it is, this video can really help push you over the edge. One more thing, remember I'm a maths teacher. I'm a maths teacher by profession. But mechanical engineering was my bachelor's degree, so I have a little thing in you. physics now. Physics, and I love physics, physics. I, I love everything. Remember, before you watch the solution video, do the paper. Do the paper. What is the paper by? I think it's June, June 2016. You will see. Do the paper first, then come back and do At least watch the paper first. And revise the topics then come and watch the solution video it will help you so much better so but before you go and do the paper press a like on the video right now all right so let's go all right so before i start let me just get out my highlighter the for the people yeah man you working good you working good all right so the activity of a radioactive sample was measured over six hour period results are here use the grid to plot okay so you had to make a diagram um a graph of a versus t so let's go to that so this is how your graph it should look um you just put the points on a suitable graph number with these kind of graph of physics, you want to take up about 75% of the graph paper in terms of your axes. So don't go and make a small chunky chunky graph that looking like that. And this should line should look smoother than this, but is my finger using and that is real stress. You see how stress it is to do this? Hey, that one come on kind of. Anyhow, so you get your graph. Yeah, so nothing spectacular start to happen yet. The next part of the question is where the action starts from your graph determine the half life. So yeah, this is this is radioactivity. So those who are asking for radioactivity, this question is on radioactivity. So determine the half life. Half life is the amount of time it takes for the activity to drop by a half. So if you want to do that on the graph, we'll just go from 80 and we'll go to 40. And we'll see what kind of time we read off there. And that's what I did. I think I have a slide up for that. Hey, where are you boy? Oh look at here. So if you focus on the orange that will tell you that will tell me you everybody what kind of half-life you working with now so the half-life was actually let me see how i write this out here the starting activity that's when it starts up was 80. so to go to the next um half-life thing whatever a wanna call that dude that will be 80 over 2 because you're dividing so that's that's the time the activity take to drop to half of it now so i should have had disintegrations for a second here so we're going to go on to 40 but the time it take to go from a0 to a1 which we're calling that the half life and that was actually 1.6 hours from the graph from the graph the half life was 1.6 take away with zero because zero is the starting time 1.6 hours i think the graph was in hours yeah so that's 1.6 hours okay let's move on using your graph determine a more accurate value of the half-life of the sample to improve accuracy in whatever. all right so yeah so we want a more accurate value so if you want a more accurate value you need to do it again and again so you could do a half-life then the next half-life then the next half-life and then get the average half-lives number so um i just do it all in one here so my initial was like this and activity after three half lives will be a half life cube a half cube by that 
So that'll be the it will drop to 40, then it will drop to 20, then it will drop to 10. You understand? So that's like a shortcut method there. You could do it the long way, whatever. Once you understand half life, you should be able to get this out. The the idea is that you want a more accurate value, but you want it from your graph again. So the only way to get a more accurate value from the graph, as far as I know, is to repeat readings, repeat, um, do more of the calculation. So that's basically what I did. So what happened here, we went from 80 to 10. So that's three half, like half lives pass. So the average will be um, the time it took to go from 80 to 10 was 4.5 divided by 3, which is 1.5 hours. So this is a more accurate reading of the half-life using the graph. Next part. Now, once again, you're only getting the juice out of this if you actually did the past people or attempted it to watch it before. Don't just jump into my diagram and run off my steam. Take some time and do it. From your graph and using that it lines determine how long it takes for the activity of the sample to be reduced to 10. From its original level so from the graph you just draw a line if you watch just now i had that line already so that's 4.5 state one reason why a line joined through all the points will not form a perfectly smooth curve well there's errors you could get different type of errors go and research errors right now errors types of errors random scientific and i think you have another one um so go and check them out so you could get errors when performing the experiment give a little example just to make sure that that one mark can slip out now boy. Um, so like a faulty stopwatch or experimental error on the experimental spot, whatever. Um, let's go on. So all elements including radioactive substances have an atomic number and a mass number. Explain what the two... Okay, definition of atomic definition of mass number. Check your textbook and read everything on this right now. That's how you should be reviewing it. As soon as you see something... What the hell? As soon as you see something, go and um, review it now, boy. Um, so in the me in the medicine iodine one two three is used to check what does it want okay three marks that's the mass number that is the total number of neutrons and protons in protons in this iodine and one thing you'll realize when I do physics chemistry and they ask me to describe something um, I just give them it full now especially if they do say state and they say what and why and explain you see them words I just hit them I like everything i know it just come gushing out on the topic so to make sure i collect all the marks and that's the way you should think of it but don't try to hit them any bs and just flood them with once the um unnecessary stuff it must be on point and trying to get the point the key points of the um question complete the bubbles in figure one by inserting the si unit which matches each of the physical quantity oh easy thing newtons kilogram meters per second go and research this go and check how i got this hint is linear momentum is mv mass by velocity so you could go and look up on momentum that topic now oh we in our next question yeah we in question two state newton's third law of motion all right so go and memorize all newton's law of motion if you haven't have it if you haven't got it under your belt go and research all them laws of motion Boom, bam, bing. That is this one for every action force. There's an equal and opposite reaction force. So you can say if body A exits a force and body B, body B will exit an equal and opposite force and body A. If I want to have different ways to represent this, just make sure you see it complete. You should have the idea that it's an action facing a reaction. So it's the same object now. And that the forces are equal and opposite. It works as a couple. It have a shorter way to state this, but I will just go with this one because, you know, it's three max. And where is three max? So make sure and collect your three max here, right? Um, I might have elaborate on this when I see three max. Anyhow, next one was kind of weird. They wanted you to draw a plane and explain how the plane going and stay in mid flight, even though it's flying horizontally. And they say draw a diagram. A diagram means one diagram, right? So this is the more useful diagram but i draw two just for kicks that is this one with the plane going up and then this one is this is the actual wing of the plane i drew here so we have a wing anyhow and if you read my my answer here the truss created by the planes engine creates a forward thrust okay that was kind of weird yeah what should i see here was creates a forward force um in response to the backward force on expel air this causes air to be pushed downwards as it meets the wing 
right? So as the air comes in to hit the mid the wing, it gets pushed downwards, and the reaction force to this is an upward lift. So as this is being pushed downwards, um, the force on the wing would be upwards to create a lift. So once you state that in some kind of way, um, it have two ways it happening. It have this is one use of it here with the with the jet engine. This is one air. Yeah, I hope all you're not hearing them dogs in the background because I get having a dog fierce out in front of me. Anyhow, so and is what was the time? It's one o'clock in the night. Anyhow, so the trust created by the plane. This is one example of Newton's third law where you have the the engine shooting out air or if it's a jet engine or propeller from the back and that causing the plane to go forward. Or you could have this idea with Newton's third law where we have the what I already mentioned. Okay, let me not stick too long. This is going to be a real long video, but I hope I'll bring all your coffee and thing. Define the term linear momentum. Linear momentum is a vector quantity defined as the product of an object's mass and velocity. Didn't I see to revise linear momentum? There it is. An 8 kilogram ball travel to the east at 10 meters per second. Blah, blah, blah. All right, this is a traditional collision principle of conservation of momentum question you can check it out momentum before collision momentum after collision the only thing is you had two things wait what really going on there boy why are you looking so all right i'll let me just decode what i have here m1 v1 m2 v2 m3 v3 all right so and i list out what each of them here represents um that's the thing with physics you can add a list out and state stuff don't try not to introduce a brand new variable that you make up without giving him a proper introduction to anybody in boy. Although we, as as the examiner, he would understand what you mean if you write M3, V3, but still, just for completeness sake and make completeness. And as I say, it's had a big kind of paranoid for Max. Anyway, 8 by 10, ding, 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 ding. Check out this question. Um, your velocity would be that. Once again, I as soon as I finish writing this paper, I start to shoot the video because... Time now, so I nearly get time to check over calculations. There is the chance I could just uh, uh, lack of sleep and hustling make a mistake. So just check over those calculations, don't take my word for it. State in the words the quantity each symbol represents. So, what is that? What is that? Oh, they, they list them out here for you, right? So, this is heat energy, joules, quantity. All right, so it, this is this is learn of thing. Try not to waste any marks on, in physics and things that I could just revise and memorize memorizing is free max there will come a time when you'll realize that memorizing is free max you think a table and a few equations and thing is pressure to memorize memorizing is free max take your time and write it down even if you have two days you could memorize or if you was practicing you could memorize off the whole physics syllabus. Well, you should see the expression on my face right now, but you can't see it because you're just watching the screen. Anyhow, what does the symbol L in equation that? Well, I specific latent heat. Um, then we go on in an experiment to determine the specific... All right, so specific. This question was a little uh, weird, but I just follow the same procedure that you use for specific latent heat questions. So calculate the heat loss by the water. This is... You use the equation of a specific heat capacity, that's that there, and they gave you the specific heat capacity at the end of the question, I just chop him in inside there. And you record that, you get this. That number look familiar here, yeah. that's because this 420, 420000 is, is a popular, is, that's the specific heat capacity number now, so that number should be like, Brothers and sisters, stay by now. Eh? When you see that, you should know whether eh? you should know whether things going correct or not. Anyhow, <clears throat> so then you calculate the heat gain by the ice. A next specific heat capacity question, but just the heat gain by the ice is twenty this time. If you read the question, you'll see that the heat lost by the water is only ten. Um, did I put the ten? Yeah, I put the ten, and I include it in this. Right, good thing at the time I stick it. So anyway, you get that. But heat loss. Heat gain by the melted ice turn out to be 20. So you get this. So it's not a tutorial video, but it's not like I just gonna get the solutions and just say goodbye. I explain in stuff as I, as we go along, right? So here we had the 10 um 
for what boy what is this this is this is grams if you look at the question this is like the um mass based on this and this all right so yeah um anyhow so you get your heat gained by the melted ice that's that was the clue there that the ice was already melted so that's the heat gained by the melted ice so now you want to um find the specific latent heat fusion of ice so this is a kind of common question just a little, a little weird um heat loss by water heat gained by melted ice heat to melt the ice right heat to melt the ice write properly yeah don't don't be like me but be be like me and get plenty of things correct but don't be like me and write crazy all right so this that m l i just substitute the equation for specific latent heat um with that there right so this is the heat to melt the ice is ml we they give you all the formulas too yeah? so big man you're just supposed to use your formulas do you think Bring across, you get L to be that, and yeah, this uh, this answer is familiar to me. I think it's 340 joules per gram you're accustomed to seeing, or somewhere, that kind of number now for, for ice. So, once you see that number and you're doing questions before, in specific latent heat, you'll be comfortable. Alright, so we're in about 15-16 minutes in the video here, so let's see. Let's three types of electromagnetic waves in order. Okay, I'll give you the whole list. But go in your textbook and check out this list. And just write it down. Try and see if you memorize it by writing it over on the next clean page. Then write it over one more time. And by those, the time you make that tree, write down. Do it. Try the exercise. Try it. Just write it down. Write. You don't need to learn the exact wavelengths. But just be familiar with it. So like if you see it, you know which one is which, right? But just write it down and, and write down the use of each of these from your textbook. Or you could just take it from here, write it down and see if you memorize it. Because you need to know this. This is called electromagnetic spectrum. You need to have a good understanding about this. They could just hit you raw like this or they could hit you more stuff on it. So go and check out that. Alright, humans can see. So this is the whole wave stuff. People say do some things with waves. Right, this past paper had waves. This question is the waves question. Um, calculate the wavelengths. Well, wave speed is wavelength by frequency. Normally, speed is distance over time, right? That kind of distance over time. But frequency is 1 over one over S already. So that's why wave speed is wavelength by frequency. By the way, you need to become comfortable with equations and units and rearranging units and things to operate in the physics line. Eh? So get that comfortable. Just learn off all the equations so you'll be able to manipulate them. Um, oh, so I did this one. And you see what I do here? That is called um not for the people so i didn't do that for the people so answer this in the comments please um check it out so this was the one for the rattlesnake and you just substitute into the equation different things there so have a look at that see if you understand that and try and do the um i think there's asking for something else a honeybee try and see if you could get the answer for the honeybee yeah using that thunder is uh, 2.3 all right so yeah this is the one question in the paper i find was vague like what we'll calculate the speed for this event i really really want to know what event they're talking about are they asking in relation to the speed of um sound so if they're asking in relation to that this is where we got it this is what we did and i'll explain this i time to see the light there's there's a little time between when the lightning flashed and when you saw it so i i got that time and i included that with this time so we call the actual time for the entire event yeah that makes sense so um so you could check this question uh, with your physics teacher i have a little contention with vague questions and like what is the speed for this event this is a vague question right it can mean anything and that means you'll have to give the student the mark if they interpret it based on english right um how does the electric current in a metal differ from that in an electrolyte compare with each all right so the thing with conventional current somebody taught um electricity used to run with positive charge and now the whole will other will run with that so conventional current is from positive to negative um but in electrons in a metal is actually we know is the electron flow so this is actually how the electron flows from negative to positive so that's basically what I'm stating there, and I state how you get electrical current in a metal is the arise. It arises out of the movement of the flow of um, 
mobile elections, you know, them elections from the election, cloud in the metal lines be running all over the place. You just get them to go in one direction with a potential difference, and boom, you have electricity. All right, so in, a, in the in an electrolyte, the charge, so this is how I explain the electrolyte. Now, in an ele electrolyte, which one better buy? In an electrolyte, the charge carriers are ions, which can be positive or things. So, is the anions, is the ions and is the cations and anions doing the, the charge carrying here. Now, since conventional current can be considered as moving as the same direction as positive charge flow, when present, it will follow the direction of the cations in the electrolyte. So, they say compare each with conventional current. This is how you'll compare that with conventional current. Next, um, state which of these two media metal and electrolyte. Have, now, I think you could actually state metal and defend your answer. But I stated electrolyte, which I feel is the common thing to state, and has a similar car, um, current flow to that in a semiconductor. Um, why is it similar? Well, you see, there's opposite, opposing charges. In an electrolyte, you have the cations and the anions going in different directions in the solution, right? Or whatever it is that you're, you're dealing with. Um, and they're going in different charges to, different, to the anodes and cathodes. Respectively, in the semiconductor, you have the same kind of setup where you have holes which are positive and then you have a surplus of electrons which are negative and they go in opposing directions, jumping in electrons, jumping in the holes and the holes shifting in the depletion zone where you have your P and N junction and what research semiconductors. So unlike a metal, both the electrolyte and the semiconductor conduct electricity via the opposing movement of charges. Um, I find that was a real nice, sweet way of stating that. So, yeah, I want my two marks for that. So, move on. The makers of a popular cell phone have upgraded its battery capacity from that to that. <coughs> if the standard charger... If the standard charger can deliver a current of that... How much more time will it take to charge the new battery than the old battery? If the standard charger can deliver, what happening to me here? Earlier, I just zoom out there and I just, you know, let me read back this question. The makers of a popular cell phone have upgraded his battery to that, to that. If the standard charger, all right, all right, all right, all right. easy thing. So you're just using this formula over and over and over and over and over again in different forms and fashion and even in the next part too. Even in the next part, we're coming up to that's supposed to be an arrow pointing to the next page. All right, so you rearrange, you get time, you get time for the old battery. I, I didn't work out the exact thing because who wants to work out the exact thing and you could stop right there and plug it in. Time to charge your new battery, I didn't work out the exact thing, so I just plug it in here. Now the difference is going to be this, take away this, which is really that. And I get my answer to be like two hours, a two hour difference, which is which, which would mean if you if you watch things, it might, it might take about. Mm, four hours to charge that battery with this that is a scene where you're gonna be attached to that battery that charger anyway a student was given a sample of candle wax oh and that's the thing with physics you must always try and think about your answer think about what you're doing see if it relate because physics is it's supposed to relate to real life so see if it makes sense check your answers then she was asked to demonstrate the temperature remains constant during it okay so you have a little candle wax and you need to show that um show what by that yeah temperature don't change when you're changing phase like going from solid so it had to be from solid to um liquid right because we're not going and boil off that candle wax <laughs> all right so describe the procedure she will use you can take your time and read this long beautiful handwriting that i have here i will just skim it so you can see what's going on uh, make sure you write it in a nice experiment um, form. I would state the equipment used. I would I would be real extra when I'm doing this. You could go and check out the experiment in your textbook. Based on this, this is just like a modified version of the, where is it? Heating and cooling curve, right? All right, let me just skim it, skim read it. Heat the candle wax indirectly by the water bath using Bunsen burner, using a thermometer, measure the temperature recorded. During the state, every time you measure the temperature, you could use like every 10 seconds or you could use um, periodically or when nice. Um, heating can be discontinued after a prolonged appearance of the liquid state, so you're not going to boil off the thing. Stop after a while, right? 
and then um which corresponds to this will correspond to a continued rise in temperature right so it will go like this heat up stay still what's going on i would have draw this curve one kind of thing because as i real i'm telling you i'll be extra in the exam just make sure you're stating proper things so yeah the curve will look like this um that is the part where you're changing state there this would be the solid and i would indicate all of this this would be the liquid because you have time you have time um work fast make sure you understand everything and you'll be able to elaborate and state your questions and come across clearly to the examiner all right take readings for the cooling wax all right so what i did i think this question is seven marks so what i did to make sure and collect my full seven marks is allow her to take the reading going up and then take it going down as well so you'd see that it really does change it really does the temperature really does stick at one spot when it's changing state so the heating and cooling curves of the candle wax should show constant temperature during melting and during solidification or what is called lava freezing yeah when you're going from liquid to solid now um and the experiment can be repeated with a greater volume of candle wax to create more noticeable results or if you get a different experiment you could say re repeat it to increase accuracy Let's keep going in order oh yeah i left out this part from number five so those who are following probably quarreling and saying oh gosh this man like to leave out piece of question eh? all right so yeah this was the part i leave out so in order to maintain a a competitive edge the cell phone maker needs to keep the same charging time blah 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 so remember we're using this equation q equal it so i just rearrange t to be equal to q over i and i equate the two the um the old with the new and this is the new thing we're trying to find and you understand okay so that's two marks you collect your two marks there in dominica so this is where my handwriting started to give up if you only watch here my handwriting was my handwriting was saying now nah, but we had enough we had enough time to sleep all right so in dominica hydroelectric hey every anybody from dominica sh shout out all right Describe how electricity is generated using the generated using the process of hydroelectricity. So yeah, you're going to just research this and comment your answer, right? So another I'm not going to give you this. This is just like easy thing. You can just research this, right? So hydroelectricity, I'll just spell it out for you. Water come turn the turbines. La, that is my beautiful turbines. There, the turbines will turn your little um coil thing. That draw real horrible. Anyhow, so that will turn and that will cut some magnetic flux and that will generate electricity. That is the long and short of it there. But stay down and nice way, make sure you collect your full max. You're using the force of the water to turn turbines to turn your generator. And then the next thing for you to research, discuss the rationale for the application of the high of hydroelectricity as a viable alternative basically the acting for what's the advantages of hydroelectric um energy right i would even state train a few disadvantages here as well but try to show that the ra since you're saying rational try to show that it outweighs the um uh, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages so some more things for you to research research the advantages of obviously you're going and say things like renewable and blah 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 and you would say dominica has a flat dam it has a good spot to put a dam without damaging the ecosystem all them kind of thing go and say them thing research that put your answer in the comment if you want to and i'll tell you how it looking i think that was it for the paper all right so that's it for the paper then let me know which people you think they want me to do next i seen 2017 2017 some people say in January 2017, whatever. Let me know if you all want solutions for next. I will run through the solutions. This is just strictly to help students who are going to do the exam one day, whatever. So I must seek a train one more paper. Um, IT people messaging me. Once that different other subjects, I could, uh, there's only so much I could do. So I'll try, maybe I'll do one or two things in IT, maybe. Another YouTuber friend was telling me stop saying yes to everything people ask and you know it's okay to say no but she didn't understand it's for the people it's for the people so ask her we are and see what I can do till next time